Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. <laughs> Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Well, yesterday we started a discussion with the listeners. We had two or three people call in, and I asked this basic question. Would you like me to have people... Come in here and tell you their stories. You know, I told everybody yesterday the reason I don't do that on a regular basis because it, it looks like it becomes a testimonial farm, like we're trying to uh, sell you something or that we're trying to prove something that we don't really need to prove. Most of the people that work with me are already millionaires, and we do this because we want to give back and we want to help other people. We'd like you to get where you want to be. But yesterday, the unanimous decision was that most of the people that called up said, in fact, I think everybody called up said they'd like to see us bring some people on for them to talk to. Now, here's the deal. This is the trade-off. It doesn't do me any good to bring these people on and just have them tell you their story unless you interact. We need your comments. We need your questions. We need you to contact us and get involved with this. This needs to be a give-and-take situation because I could have anybody call up and tell you anything they want to tell you, but unless you question these people, unless you comment on what they're saying, uh, you're not going to be able to get out of it what you need or what you want to hear from it. So today I'm going to bring on my first guest, and I'm going to try to bring maybe just one a week on. Uh, I don't want to turn this whole show into that type of a deal because this show is so much more than that. But just for those people yesterday that wanted to, to see someone or to listen to someone tell their story, I brought someone on today that I think is really a great connector. A uh, connector with the fact that there are two different ways you can live your life. You can live your life in the conventional format and go to school, get a job, save your money, put it in a 401k. Or you can go a completely different direction. You can go out and start your own business and become rich. Now, interestingly enough, this gentleman did it at a very early age. He's only 26 years of age. He's already been real estate investing since he just got out of high school. And uh, he has a very interesting story. And the story starts with his father asking him uh, the question, Son, I've saved up a few dollars for you for an education, but I'm going to offer you an alternative option. You can either take the money and go to school, or you can take the money and start some type of a business with it, and I hope you look into it. And you can grow and learn and uh, make your way that way, whichever way you would prefer to go. And this young gentleman decided that he was going to go on the business route. So he and his father looked around and decided that they wanted to go find something for him to do. And I'm going to let him take up the story from that point right on now that we've set it up for him. The gentleman I'd like to introduce you today is Mr. John Boriak. John, you with us today? I'm honored to be here. Thank you. John, um, I want to give you a well earned accolade. For those of you out there who don't know, John is not only 26 years old and already owns a couple apartment complexes. Uh, John won the Houston Apartment Association's Real Estate Investor of the Year Award for independent real estate owners. In other words, he's not a big conglomerate corporation. He's an independent guy that set up his business and runs his apartment complexes, and he won Investor of the Year. And in addition to that, which is unusual, and this is got to be a record somewhere, he not only won the Independent Investor of the Year, one of his other properties won the property of the year. So two of his two properties both won awards. So, John, I congratulate you for successful 2014. However, I heard today that they contacted you, and now they want to nominate you for the Texas Apartment Association Investor of the Year. Did I hear that right, or was that just buzz that wouldn't, wasn't real? No, that's uh, that, that's correct. I actually got an email just a couple hours ago from the Houston Apartment Association saying they would like to nominate me. So I'm very, very honored to have gotten that and, and uh, very blessed by that. Now, I know that you've already set a record of winning the 
the Apartment Association's awards at 26 years of age. If you won the Texas one by 26 years of age, it's just going to blow my mind. So let's start with the story back there where your dad, pick up where your dad was having this conversation with you about giving you an option to do something different than the average kid does. Tell me about that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, like you said, we've, we've come a long way, but um, really cool to, to think back of how the Lord kind of started us out. And like you said, my dad just came and, and uh, provided an ulterior option to uh, the traditional brick-and-mortar college uh, scenario. So I took that, and we, we found Lifestyles Unlimited, I think, on the, on the listening to you on the radio, when we came to kind of the initial two-day class, and, and uh, we're very impressed just by the, the fundamentals that seem to be taught and just the, the awesome fundamentals that real estate has and the, the avenue that I think, you know, that we, we thought that would that would uh, provide for us to be more or less a career or a, a long-term plan for me, and it has. So we, we jumped right in. We, we bought in hook, line, and sinker, and uh, we, we started out doing single-family houses, so we were kind of dabble in that first. And you've got to remember, going into this, I was a kid fresh out of high school. I not only had no real estate experience, I had no business experience. I had no leadership skills. I had no uh, accounting skills. You know, learned it all kind of from, from scratch and from lifestyles and from the people there. And so by doing single family, you know, for that first year, it kind of enabled me to learn the basics of the business. And we uh, were making good money there and, and, and loved that business. So we went a little bit Tell bigger. us a little bit. Before we go on, you know, sure. we haven't gone into this before. Uh, at the case study, when you did your talk, you didn't really go into what you did for the single families. Tell us just briefly what you accomplished in single families. What kind of cash flow were you making on that? What kind of capital gains did you make on that? Sure, sure, yeah. So we um, we bought those houses. This is kind of a testament to how awesome real estate is. We bought those houses, you know, before kind of the big, big drop in real estate prices, which happened around in 2000, 2008, 2009. We bought these houses in 2007 and 2008, and uh, and and they right out of the box. And these are these are the houses that we that you know would normally the after repaired value being eighty to a hundred thousand dollars that we were buying for you know thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars. And these houses would cash flow two, three, up to four or five hundred dollars each. And uh, which provided you know me a little bit of income and and this was and uh, and the the capital appreciation as well or the the capital gains while we haven't sold well we actually just this year started selling some of these and we're selling the properties that we bought for you know eighty ninety thousand dollars are now worth um, you know one hundred and thirty five hundred and forty thousand dollars and I'm I'm excited to start liquidating some more of these as we go. We're probably a little behind the curve as far as selling some of these houses, but they've been awesome, little phenomenal investments. And you talk about no time. I mean, we've got eight houses, and I literally probably spend two uh, two or three hours a month managing these eight houses that are making us, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do quick math in my head here, probably a 1000 or $1,200 a month. Wow. So what made you decide to change from houses over to apartments then? Well, we, we, you know, the natural flow that, that, that is taught at Lifestyles is, is to transition from the I'm tell, small, smaller scale of houses into apartments. And we saw, um, you know, if I was going to want to do this full time and, 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 uh, and make the, uh, more or less a career out of this or, or uh, have, my, have my long-term plan in real estate, we needed to go bigger than just the single family houses. And so we, uh, while those are great, you know, investments and great experiences and you can make a lot of money doing the single family houses, we saw more opportunity for long term growth in the apartment industry, the multi multifamily side of things. So that's what's made us kinda make that initial jump into a little fifty unit apartment complex. Yeah, now that's interesting also the the first deal that you did because uh, what I teach, and I want everybody out here to know this, I'm just prefacing this. What I teach is don't work in your business, work on your business. Yeah. I don't want people buying these things and going in and managing them. But th- that wasn't what your dad had in mind. Your dad wanted you to go work in this business to learn this business, almost like a on-site college education type of deal. Uh, is that uh, pretty much what it worked out to be? Exactly, yeah. We kind of we were outside the normal way of, of doing this and that I – was, you know, running in the business for a time to learn it because, like I said, I needed the experience. It was, it was you know, my 
hard knocks college education. That's where I really learned the business was that was running those apartments and running those houses. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break, John. Uh, when we come back, I uh, hope people will get on the phone. Our number here is 866-945-6565. Folks, not very often you get to meet a 26-year-old millionaire. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Welcome back. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Dell Wamsley. With me today is the Houston Apartment Association Independent Real Estate Investor of the Year, a 26-year-old Mr. John... Boriak and John, I'm going to skip over the 50 unit that you worked in and got your got your uh, education from, because I want to get to the deals that you won the awards for. But before we go to that, we do have a caller holding, so I'd like to get the caller in. But we're going to start with the one that you won the uh, uh, property award. I think was your first large deal you did. But before that, we've got Luke in San Francisco. Luke, how can we help you today? Yeah, um, so I just started uh, listening to your program. Uh, uh, probably about two, actually about two or three weeks ago. And um, I've been kind of slammed at work lately. I haven't had a chance to get onto the Lifestyles Unlimited website and check it out. But uh, I definitely wanted to give you a call while you were on the air today um, and just kind of pick your brain a bit. Um, my my wife and I, um, we purchased our, our first house back in 2012. And um, getting into real estate investing is something that's uh, particularly been that I've been particularly interested in. However, my wife is kind of uh, a little more conservative and a little more fearful in the fact that she's afraid of, you know, having a second house to primarily just to rent from. So instead, I've had to actually take some of my own money that I make, you know, from selling odds and ends here on eBay and making money and opened up an online brokerage account and started trading some stocks and stuff. But after I started listening to your show a few weeks ago, I definitely like the idea of investing in something that actually pays you. I actually heard your uh, your, your golden goose story, um, and I was like, Dude, that's that's it, it's it's cool. I love the idea of actually investing in something that actually pays you every month instead of something that you just invest in and then hopefully one day you know you'll be able to pull money out of it. But big differences between speculation and actually earning income. When you have earned income, you get it every month. You have something to spend. When you speculate, it goes up, goes down. Sometimes you hit some good ones. Sometimes you don't. But you don't really have any money. I mean, it doesn't pay you. You need something to live off of. So what was your question then? So my question is, um, I, you know, I don't have a lot of money to begin with. You know, I just spoke to my wife actually a few hours ago and kind of just started uh, reaching the subject of possibly doing real estate investment. But right now, as it sits right now, um, Money that I've made, you know, I've only got like a few grand to even get started with, which isn't much, especially given that I live in <laughs> in California, which kind of sucks. That being said, in your opinion, what would be the best way to get started? Like actually finding like legit uh, investment group and just making money that way? Because obviously I don't have enough money to score like, a, you know, 10% level and a 20% down payment on a regular. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have a difficulty in San Francisco buying anything. With two thousand yeah. bucks, I don't think you could well, buy the the doormat actually, that goes in front of the house. I live an hour and a half away in Modesto, where real estate you know prices for like a three two are probably around you know one fifty one seventy five, which is well, that should work. That that that's a functional thing. I think you're going to need to have around ten or fifteen thousand saved up before you start. There's ways to to use creative financing to be able to do this stuff. However, just overall to get into this kind of a business, you need to have some liquid funds. You know, there's stuff that yeah. comes up you want to be able to pay on an ongoing basis that you need to have some liquid funds. So I would recommend you save up about 10 or 15 grand. Uh, if you want to do something, though, to make a major step towards it, then I would recommend you just sign up for our class and learn all the stuff you're going to need to know while you're saving that money up. And you might find a deal that's a great deal while you're saving and you might partner on that deal with somebody. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, or you might cool. sell that deal to somebody else because... If you've got that education, you know what you're looking for, then you can go out and find something. Even though you can't fund it yourself, you can quite honestly many times find somebody else to fund it with you. And if you listen okay. to the story about John Boriak, I think you're going to see what I mean. It will show you what I'm talking about. Awesome. Appreciate the information. All right, Luke. Thanks for calling in. All right, John, you there? Yes, sir. All right, so this gentleman doesn't have any money, but he wants to do some real estate. Let's talk about your first large deal. How many families helped you fund this first large deal? 
Yeah, definitely. We had 12 families partner with us on this deal. You know, obviously, this was something too big for us to take down on our own. So we found uh, 12 other uh, families within Lifestyles that had similar education and training and wanted to, wanted to do an apartment deal, and, and we bought this deal together. So let's go through the numbers like you did the other night, uh, clarifying what you bought it for, how much you had to put down, and uh, how you profited on this deal, both in the capital gains and on the, uh, the cash flow. So those families, those 12 families, corporately, we all put in a total of $2.8 million. So that was our, our initial capital in this deal. Our purchase price for this deal, and by the way, this is 200 units, and it's a property it's about built in 1979, and we paid a total of $6.9 million for the purchase price. And then after closing costs, and rehab to fix the place up very nice. We're all in at about $7.7 million. That's kind of our, our all-in price. Okay. Um, so since then, we have been, that was, that was in March of 2012 when we bought it. So after doing the rehab, we, uh, you know, I asked around all the other members of Lifestyles what's the best, you know, way to operate a property uh, that, that, with this problem, who's the best vendor for this issue. We got our best practices in place. We have improved the cash flow so much that the, uh, the value of that property now has almost doubled to where it is about 14 and a half or $14.7 million, you know, today or this year. If we were to go sell that today, that's about what the thing would sell for. So we have created about $7 million in increased value here with the capital gains. And that's if we were going to, you know, go sell it today. But in addition to that, from just the cash flow that's generated, from distributions that we have made to the, uh, the, the our investors in this deal, we have distributed one, almost $1.5 million in, in checks sent out to our investors. And remember, we only put in $2.8 million to begin with, so we've almost returned, or we've returned over half of our initial investment in this deal over the course of the last, whatever it's been, couple, two and a half years. Wow, that's unbelievable. How much did you raise the income to now? Yeah, so when we bought the property, they were collecting about $120,000 a month. And we knew there was some room to improve the operations and raise some rent. And we, when we bought it, we originally thought we could probably get that income from 120000 up to about 135. Well, it turns out we were able to do better than we thought, and the Houston apartment market has been really well. We are now collecting it bounces between one hundred and sixty five and one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a month. So about a I'm not sure what that math is thirty five thirty forty percent increase in the income. That's an incredible story. We've got to take another break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to go through more of the details on this particular deal and another deal that John's done. But let's think about this. John's made a set of partners seven plus one and a half eight and a half million dollars on a total investment of $2.8 million. That's a 300 plus percent return. We'll be right back with the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Welcome back. Now here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America one person at a time, Dell Wamsley. With me today is the Houston Apartment Association Independent Real Estate Investor of the Year, Mr. John Boriak. John, as we are talking about this in the last segment, yesterday, when I had people call up and answer this question, do you want me to bring people on to discuss some of these deals? Uh, because I'm always afraid, you know, you go out there and you start telling people about how great you've done and then they think you're bragging instead of teaching and so forth. So there's always that, that little risk there. But, you know, everybody said, no, we'd let it know. But here was what was really interesting about the whole thing is that the guy said, well, you know, it'd really be neat, interesting, if you could actually get somebody to tell the truth and tell the numbers. And what these guys don't understand, John, is that everything we do, everybody in our group tells the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and shares the numbers and takes you to the deal and shows you the deal and educates people with live deals. Now, they don't know that, John, okay? But to prove this to you, because I know you're a very private family, and so I'm asking a lot of you, but I know the facts behind the case. So I'm going to disclose for these people something and see if, if I'm close to being right. I think I spoke with your dad about it one time. Wasn't your dad sharing this profit somewhere around eight hundred thousand dollars of that eight million bucks or something like that? Oh, of the of the gain, something like a thirty five percent owner. So so he gets about a third of of, uh, of the profits there. So a third of eight million dollars. 
Man, the, the, what I'm trying to get to here, guys, is that the average person out there, John, has no idea how much money we make at Lifestyles. It's, it's incomprehensible for them. You know, the guy wrote me the other day an email. He said, I make 11% of my stocks. I'm so sick and tired of you picking on stock people and calling it ignorant. I go, you know, and I wrote him back. I said, look, it's not ignorant to want to be middle class. To want to make 11% is a, a worthy goal for one's life. But these guys don't understand the kind of money we're making. And, you know, if you you say to yourself, well, what did I do for my son to send him to college? Well, I got him a college degree, obviously. You know, I've now you know, made him, locked him into suffrage of working for the rest of his life to own nothing, to make very little, and to earn 11% on his greatest goal in investments. And yet, what this has done for you is not only made your dad $800,000 or better, whatever one third of eight million is. I think it's got to be more than that, man. Let's see, one third of three and age, two point four million dollars would be one third of that. So if if you're you know you make your dad two point four million dollars, obviously he's got back everything he invested into you, but you've gotten this college education of life, mm-hmm. and that's what I don't think they're seeing here. They can't they can't wrap their arms around it because it's just too unbelievable for them that. People can do this, but I want to ask you this. How many people out there, not your age, but how many other people have you met at Lifestyles have done the very same thing? Oh, at Lifestyles, you know, there's there's plenty. Well, there's a group of, just from the, I, I'm not as, as in tune with the single family side of the things. I know there's plenty of people over there, but there's, I don't know how many, 10, 15 of us that, that do this, uh, the multifamily business on a large scale where we put together deals and take, you know, take investors and, and do deals with other families. And, and I'm, and, you know, I've learned and owe everything to all of them because I call them all the time, every day, because I've been reading on them, of who do you call for this problem and how do I fix this issue? And it's a very, you know, self-supporting group and, and uh, absolutely invaluable. There's no way we, we could have gotten where we've gotten today without not this group that the Lord's blessed us with. So your little mastermind group is composed of about 15 of these guys. Yeah. In reality, there's over 100 of these guys that are doing oh. this. Yeah. and. You know, and you figure out, you put 24 families, what did you put in this one? How many families in this one? I forgot. This was 12 families? There's, yeah, there's 12 families in, in this one. Mm-hmm. And the next deal you did had 24 families, am I correct? Correct, yes, sir. So you've got 36 families that you're changing their life for them. Now, you think about that. You say, well, how many people are involved? Well, if you've got 100 people out there and each of them have 36 families, and some guys have over 100 families invested with them. Think of the number of lives that you guys are changing where you're getting them 300% return in two years compared to 11% return a year. It's just a crazy, crazy thing. Now, you talk about this young gentleman, Luke, who called up, and Luke's saying, I have no money. Well, obviously, you didn't have $2.8 million at 26 years of age right out of high school. So how did you raise $2.8 million? Yeah, it's it's within the group. It's a a matter of of learning the, the fundamentals of the business that are so clearly taught at, at Lifestyles and just being able to go and connect with real people. I'm not meeting people over email or on some kind of mass, you know, communication, marketing thing. We're, these are people that we go together with the class with and we shake hands with and we eat lunch with and we go out on road trips together and, and, and look at properties. And the Lifestyles group is a tight-knit group where we're able to network with these individuals and these families and realize you find people that have common goals and values that we do and will fit well with us and in uh, just a natural forming partnership. Now, have you taken out and given back besides the case study? I know you've done a couple case studies and I know you've done, this is the second time you've done a radio show with me. Have you done road trips? Have you given back? Let people come out to your business and look at the inside of what you do. Absolutely. I love doing that. I mean, like I said, the, the, I owe everything I have to the group at Lifestyles, and I'm anxious to to kind of return that favor when it's my my turn. And so, yeah, we've done two, three, four. I don't know. I've lost count. Probably four, two, three, four different road trips where we've taken people out to you know the property that won the the, the awards, and also our more recent acquisition, and and showing them here's what we did on our rehab. Here's the everything from you know here's the roofing company we used to here's the paint color we choose we chose. Here's the staff we use. Here's the the software we use, anything and everything is open for questions. Now, can you imagine this, folks? This is for those of you listening right now. If I were to go over here to Kroger's or Randall's or Safeway and say, look, I want to open a grocery store. What I'd like you to do is tell me everything about how you run yours, where you buy your stuff at, what you pay for your stuff, how you hire your employees, what you pay them, how you screen them. 
uh, how you market stuff, how you, you know, face your shelves. And I just want to copy everything you do so I can start as successful as you are. Can you imagine out there, folks, any business being willing to do that? Yet for years at Lifestyles, that's what we've done. We take people so that once you start, you have all the knowledge that a pro has right from the beginning before you start. That's why the the expectations are so high for every one of our students, and the failure rates are so low for so very few of our students. So, John, let's move on to the second deal. Tell us about the next deal you did. Sure. Okay. So the next deal is Legends of Memorial. It is 160 units in a, a really prestigious area of town, but it was not a very nice property when we took over. It was a property that had been, uh, I'm going to just use and abused by its previous mom and pop owner who wasn't involved in a group like Lifestyles and really didn't know what he was doing as far as the maintenance and taking care of the property. So it was, it was really run down. And it was a shame because it was in a really nice area of town with really high rents and uh, just, just a really upscale in the town, but it was it was just an eyesore and needed a lot of work. And so we uh, we bought it right at uh, 12 months ago, or yeah, I guess 12 months ago, and and uh, have since just undergone a complete transformation of that property where just about anything and everything that you can see has been replaced. And we've turned that from a, a horrible eyesore. We've done about almost $2 million worth of work to uh, fix up that property and, and turn it into a, a really, really nice aesthetic uh this you know, urban luxurious place to live that is that is uh, has an awesome location right off I ten and and uh, where it is where the rent levels we're able to achieve with this new rehab is beyond what we even had had planned on. You know, to put it in perspective, when we bought the property, I think their market rents were on a small we'll call it a square foot basis, sort of your rent per square foot of the apartment units were about 90 cents, 90 cents to a dollar per square foot, which is already pretty high, you know, compared to the general Houston market just because of location. After this rehab, our, you know, our rents now are running about a dollar thirty to a dollar forty a square foot. So, you know, a 40% increase again in the rent levels that we'll be able to get with this new rehab. And it, and it's just such a, it's so, it, it's so fulfilling to be able to take something that was so ugly and so run down and turn it into a really beautiful property. All right, we've got about uh, 30, 40 seconds here before they're going to cut us off to a break. Um, I'm going to give out the number again in case anybody would like to ask John questions. Our number here is 866-945-6565. When we come back from the break, John, I'm going to have you slam out the numbers, the down payment money, the rehab money, the all-in money, uh, purchase price, and then let's talk about projections, where this thing's going to end up after you get it completed. Uh, For the rest of you, again, if you'd like to ask John some questions, our number here is 866-945-6565. We'll cover that when we come back to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Welcome back. Now here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America one person at a time, Dell Wamsley. John, before we get started here, I just want to tell everybody, look, guys, I need you to respond and tell me either by calling up right now and letting us know if you like this type of a segment in the show or not. If you don't have access to be able to call me right now, uh, you can email me at askdell, that's one L, D-E-L, askdell, D-E-L, at L-U-I-N-C dot com, L-U-I-N-C dot com, askdell. And uh, let me know what you think of this this type of addition, this type of segment ad. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, my show is generally about me ranting on about life. And if you want this piece in there, you got to let me know that you do. All right, John, back to you now. Uh, second property, Legends of Memorial. Tell us uh, the numbers. People like to hear numbers all the time. They say, let's hear the truth. Yeah, sure. So on this deal, uh, it's 160 units. And we pay a total of a uh, purchase price of $7 million for this deal. And uh, we, if you include closing costs and the rehab that it took to do this, it was quite a bit of rehab. We're all in total cost for us is, is right at $9 million. That's our, our all in on this deal. And again, it's a very, very good area. So we're, uh, we're proud to own, and own that area and it's for $53,000, $54,000 per unit. Um, now, let's talk about this $9 million. How much of it is equity that people paid in to get into the deal, and how much of it is loan? 
Sure. So we put in um, our total capital invested in this deal, again, was 24 families. We got 24 families together, and we put in a total of three, minus 3.2 million. So we have that okay. 3.2 million kind of invested in this deal. Um, we've now finished the the rehab, the transition. So we fixed up the property. We're now getting the high rents. We're working on filling it up with our, our new and improved clientele. We will be seeking this year, first part of this year, to get a, uh, a new loan. We're going to refinance our loan on this deal because we've improved the value of the property from our operations. So now we want to refinance and get a new loan at that higher value. So we'll, so we'll be able to pull some cash out of that deal. I believe we've improved the value by, you know, this is me, me projecting it, and we'll know more in a few months after we get our appraisals back. But I'm, I'm guessing that we've improved the value from, you know, the seven million dollars that we bought it at up to about uh, probably ten and a half or eleven million dollars now. So again, we're all in at nine million dollars. I believe we have an asset worth probably ten, ten and a half pretty easily um, right now. And then even after we pull that money out and they're able to, to distribute that, that increased value back to our investors, even after that, we should be able to generate cash flows of a, about four hundred thousand dollars per year or so. So if you take that number and uh, apply it towards our capital invested, that's about a 13% return. Okay. I'm trying to do some quick math here. I'm trying to figure out what you're going to be able to pull out. Oh, and gotcha. uh, see, so it looks like uh, you can get a loan of about eight million, eight and a quarter million, mm-hmm. and you have to pay off that old loan. The Your old, old loan was... Six, the old loan's about six, six, six point two, six point three, I think. 6.3. Gonna have to pay off, so eight and a quarter minus six and a quarter. Uh, so you get about two million. Mm-hmm. So you'll be able That's to pull right. back out about two million of the three point two million you put in. So um, three point two million divided by two million, and it didn't work at all. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, it's not, never works on the radio, John. Divided by two million. If you take the two million dollars that we're going to pull out and divide it by the three point two that we have invested in it, you know what is that? Sixty yeah. percent somewhere in there. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So it's three million dollars here, divided by two point three. Is that what you're saying? No, well, three point two. But I'm sorry, you got two million dollars, and you divide that by the three point two million. And you end up with uh, a bunch of zeros. Well, <laughs> I can't do it on my cell, on my phone while I'm doing this. It just didn't work out. But this is some quick, and real easy math in your head. If you're if you're pulling out two mil, and you put three mil in, you're getting about sixty percent of your money back. That's right. without any calculator at all, just using normal human technique there. So you get about sixty percent of your money back. And how long you been in the deal? Uh, right at a year. Okay, now that's tax-free, too, also, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So, again, in this particular project, you've already got a 60% return the first year. Now, what are you projecting the second year? Do you have any other projections? I, w- once we get that, that refinance in place, I, I'm projecting that the ongoing cash flows from the operations will be about a 13% return, about $400,000 sure. a year or so. Okay. So what we're talking about here to make, create a comparison. Now, the last deal was just a phenomenal home run. This deal here is uh, still a great deal, but less of that home run. But what we're saying is on this particular deal, it'd be like going out and buying a bond that paid you 13%, which is unheard of. You'd never get that. And then a year later, selling the bond at a 60% gain from what you paid for it. Uh-huh. So if you bought the bond for a hundred thousand dollars you could get a hundred and sixty thousand bucks in capital gain sixty percent capital gain along with the thirteen percent cash flow on an annual basis and so you put that together for the first year you've got thirteen and sixty you're going to have probably around seventy some seventy three percent return and then thirteen percent thereafter unless you continue to raise the rents do you see potential to, to raise the rents or to control the costs anymore or have you already you pretty much brought this one up into a stabilized position that can't go any further. No, I think there's still definitely going to be room. You know, once once we fill the place up, we'll be able to play with rents more, and we'll be able to do 
things like maybe you charge more for a pool view or charge more for a downstairs unit and uh, you look at the, the tweak the income even a little bit more. We'll, we'll, of course, always find ways to cut expenses and find things for a better price. And then also the rents in Houston, just in the, in the, the market, are, are, are slated to go up you know, significantly again this year, just like they did last year. So we'll benefit from that as well. Absolutely. Well, John, I want to thank you for coming on. We're coming to the end of the show here. I want to thank you very much for showing up, and I want to congratulate you again, not only for what you did last year, but the fact now that you've been nominated for the Texas Apartment Association Award, and we look forward to you winning that. And, of course, my greatest hope is that you win the National Apartment Award also so I can go ahead and get up there with you and party with you because we're taking a group of people up there for the National Apartment Association Awards this year, uh, as we do every year. But remember, it's not the money. It's the life. See you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.